When the garden starts coming in, it's some of the best eating of the whole year. There's just nothing like getting those fresh vegetables straight from your garden, being able to go out and pick a ripe tomato, uh, a cucumber, an ear of corn if you grow corn, straight from the garden, whatever it is. It tastes so good. It's just such good eating. Well, when I was growing up and the garden started coming in, you can see ours is beginning to. I, this time of the year, I have like stuff laying usually all over my counters and um, while I'm getting ready to whether I'm going to put it up, if I'm going to make something out of it, if I'm going to share with Granny, whatever it is I'm doing. In between, when I get it done, I usually have them sitting around on my counters. Although our garden is starting to come in, as you can see, we've been eating cucumbers and beans for, I don't know, two weeks, maybe three weeks for the cucumbers and squash, zucchini, tomatoes. Um, it's it's not doing that well, even though it's starting to come in. We've had rain in Brasstown for a week and a half, daily rain, and not much sunshine. A little bit of rain is typical uh, for the Southern Appalachian Mountains where I live. It's kind of like they say we live in a temperate rainforest. It's true, but usually you kind of have sunshine all day long and then a late evening thunderstorm. But for the last week and a half, almost two weeks, it's been mostly rain. And the garden is just not doing well because of that, which is a bummer. But if you're a gardener, you just have to take what you get. That's how it goes. So we are getting uh, produce, but a lot of our plants are beginning to get yellow from too much rain. I'm hoping that in the coming days we'll have a lot of sunshine and things will really, really begin to take off again like they were before the last two weeks of rain. When I was growing up, Granny and Pap had a garden. We'd eat out of the garden. Like I said, it's just the best eating of the year. If you have a, a fresh vegetables, whether it's whatever your variety is from your garden, and a cake of cornbread, that's a meal by itself. It is just so good. It's just such good eating. But one of the things Granny would always make, and she still does today, when things start coming in from the garden, she is just like a staple that she would make, and as soon as we eat it, she would make more and just keep it in the refrigerator, was a really easy salad. The easiest salad ever. She would just use, and I'll show you in a minute how I make it, and I'll tell you some variations of how other people make it, but it's just straight from the garden. Onions, tomatoes, uh, and cucumbers, and that's it just all mixed up kind of like you would think of a relish but not diced as finely as most relishes but it's just really a fresh taste and granny makes that she puts it in the refrigerator and then we'd eat it till it's gone or she'd eat it now till it's gone with every meal you just kind of get a scoop of that little salad and have it fresh well after i was married i, I made it myself because i grew up with it and it's so simple to make it's not like you need to need to, many directions or whatever um, but I started thinking about it and I thought, well, Granny's made that my whole life. I wonder where she learned how to make it. And she probably learned, I figured, from Granny Gazzy, but I didn't really remember it being there at Granny Gazzy's when I would eat there as a child. Anyway, so when I asked Mother, I said, you know, where did you learn how to make that salad? You've been making it. And she said, well, I'll tell you a funny story about it. So in Granny's family, there was 11 children and nine lived to adulthood. And that's a lot of kids, as you might imagine, a lot of older ones. And then as you go down, you know, the stair steps. Well, Granny's third youngest from the youngest. She's the third. So she was some of the later ones that come on. By the time she come along, some of those older siblings were married and gone and living on their own with their own children. And so she said in those days, she would sometimes go and stay with those older ones that didn't live. The ones that stayed here, she, of course, seen all the time. But uh, one of her sisters named Dorothy, Aunt Dot, we called her, she lived in Gastonia. And she would come home to visit, and then she would take Granny back home with her, her little sister. You know, she'd take her back home with her, and she'd spend the summer. And Granny would help with her children, Aunt Dot's children. She had uh, sons, and so they were little, and she would help with them and help around the house and just do different things. And she said, in one summer I went, or every summer that I went, Aunt uh, Dot would make uh, that little salad. And she said, and I was just crazy about it. She said, I was such a picky eater, but I was crazy about that salad. So one day I said, you know, where did you learn how to make this? And she said, she laughed and said, well, Mother taught me. Doesn't she make it for you at home? And so for whatever reason, by that point uh, in Granny's life, by the time she'd come along, Granny Gazzy had quit making that little salad. And so um, Granny, my mother, told uh, her sister, Dorothy, said, no, she don't ever make it for us. And she said, well, that's where I learned how to make it. She made it for us the whole time we were growing up. So um, Granny said that was a really interesting way that she did learn it from her mother, but not straight from her. She learned it by way of her sister, Aunt Dot, which was really interesting. But now I'm going to show you how simple it is to make.
It's as easy as chopping up your vegetables and mixing them together with some salt and pepper. And as far as the amount, it, um, it depends on your taste it, and of course the quantity that you need. So depending on, you know, you may like a lot of onion. You may not be somebody that doesn't like a lot of onion. So, and, and even down to the size of, of how you um, chop the vegetables. It's just totally personal preference of how you like them. So I'm going to start, and then, and since it is so easy, it's one that you could really just play around with till you get um, the taste that you like. Of course, Granny and I have done it for so many years, we kind of know what our family likes and what they don't. These are, I, this is the first year I've grown these uh, cucumbers. They're silver slicers. And I've really enjoyed them. I was kind of hesitant about, I've tried so many different cucumbers over the year and then I, I usually regret it. And my favorites are just the Boston pickling cucumber and the Arkansas. Arkansas, is it? It's an Arkansas cucumber. I don't remember if it's Little Arkansas. Anyway, those are the ones I usually like. And so a lot of times I regret um, trying something different, but I really like the flavor of these. And again, personal preference if you want to peel the cucumbers or if you don't want to peel them. That's just totally up to you which way you would rather do it. There's just nothing that smells as fresh and clean to me as a cucumber straight from the garden. And for your tomatoes, of course, any tomato works just fine. Our larger tomatoes are just now beginning to get ripe, so we mostly the ones that we've been eating are the Juliettes, which are not doing as good as I had hoped, but I am getting a few off of them. And then the uh, these little Sun Gold Tommy Toes, which are so good, you could just eat them. I could just eat them out of hand all day long. They're so good. I like growing the Juliettes. Well, I, I like having the Juliettes like I did last year. They come from John C. Campbell Folk School, the ones I had access to last year, because they're perfect for drying if you like to dry tomatoes. They just, just slice them uh, one time down the middle and put them on the dehydrator like that, and they're just like candy once they uh, are finished dehydrating. I could just eat them that way too and put them in salads. Of course, you can make sauces and all kinds of stuff with dried tomatoes, but I mostly just use them on my salads or eating like a snack. If you've never seen a little knife like this, this is a tomato knife from Rada, Rada, depending on how you say it, R-A-D-A. -A. They used to sponsor some of my posts on Blind Pig and the Acorn, and that's where I got it, and it's a dandy little knife if, you've, if you'd like to have one. I'm sure you could go to their website and find one. So, let's see how we're at. Let me get a spoon. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to add some salt and pepper. You could add whatever kind of seasonings you want. And in a minute, I'm going to read you some other variations that my, oh, whoops, my readers on the Blind Pig and Acorn have shared. Now, this would be really good right now, even. Uh, I'm about to eat dinner, so I may get me a spoonful and add it to my salad that I usually eat for dinner. But it'll be really good by the time supper gets here, as, after it's sit in the refrigerator, after it marries, as Matt would say. Then it'll be really good and ready to eat. And a cake, of a, a piece of cornbread. Oh, my goodness. That, that would be the perfect lunch or supper right there, especially if you add in some fried squash and some... Roasting ears, some boiled corn. Man, that's a feast. So now I'm just going to put this in the fridge and let it marry, as Matt would say. 
So you can see it really is the world's easiest salad. It's just so good though. And, I, and you're probably familiar with it like a lot of my readers were. One time when I wrote about it or shared the recipe on a blind pig and an acorn, I wanted to read you what some of the other, some of my readers had to say about it. So Sandy said, I thought I was the only one who ate this. I chop it fine and eat it in the middle of the night on bread grilled in olive oil. I put a bit of garlic in mine too or rub the bread with a, a clove of it. Oh, yum. Mrs. K said, this is my favorite salad, but like everyone else, I have my own adjustments. I chop up the tomato and cucumber, salt them, and let the whole mess sit until it gets juicy. Then add a bit, bit of oregano, some olive oil, and wine vinegar along with some crusty bread chopped up. So yummy. So Wanda said, I love this. Usually put a little olive oil and lemon juice on it too. It's one of my favorite nighttime snacks with the leftover cornbread from supper. So Wanda's like me. That little salad and some cornbread is so good. Such good eating. Bill Burnett, he was a dear friend as well as being a blind pig and acorn reader. He's no longer with us. But Bill said, my mom made a similar salad in the summer since we always raised a large garden and ate whatever was in season. She often added a little sugar and vinegar, adding a great sweet sour kick to the great flavors of the fresh veggies. So I need to try some of those. I never have. I just make it like Granny made it when I was growing up and enjoy it. But I hope that you enjoyed seeing uh, Granny's Easy Summer Salad. I hope that you'll leave me a comment and tell me if you make it and if you have any of those little variations like my readers shared. It's always great to learn how someone else does things. And mostly, I just hope you'll drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia.